What is OpenXML document generation all about? Often it consists of taking some data source and injecting that data in some fashion into a docx, sometimes in a fairly elaborate, complicated way. Document Assembler is a new module in OpenXML Power Tools 4.01 that processes a template document that is constructed in a special way along with some XML data and produces a newly assembled document with the data injected into the document at specific points. It produces a complete valid word processing ML document that can be sent to an end user, can be converted to another form such as PDF or XPS. It can also be further processed by the OpenXML SDK or OpenXML Power Tools. It has very good performance. Based on the complexity of your template document, you can generate thousands of documents per minute using this module. The way I designed this module is that it always takes data from an XML file. Your job as a developer then is to somehow or other generate this XML from your data source and then fire off document assembler to do the actual document creation. What are the typical things that need to be done when we are merging XML data into a template document? First of all, we certainly want to insert pieces of data into runs of content. For instance, we want to insert the customer name into the document at this location. Here we have a content control with a little bit of XML in it with an XPath expression that specifies the source of the data. And we want to replace this content control with data from the XML file. The inserted content takes the paragraph and run styling directly from the template document. The paragraph styling comes from the paragraph that contains the content control and the run styling comes from the XML text in the content control. Here I've opened in Visual Studio the OpenXML Power Tools examples solution that contains all of the C Sharp examples that show how to use the core modules in OpenXML Power Tools. There are three document assembler examples. The one we're looking at here is document assembler 01. You can see all of the code here that is necessary to run document assembler. As you can see, the code to fire off document assembler is really trivial. Let's run this example. Here is the data.xml that that example refers to. We can see that the name element contains the name Tai Yi. When we look at the assembled document, we can see in fact, that content control was replaced by the appropriate name. I'm going to turn on design mode here so that we can see the content controls that surround these little bits of XML. I can change the character formatting of this XML. I'll give it some nice style like that. I'll make it larger. I'll give it a background color. And now we can see that the assembled document shows that, that formatting flowed through from the template document to the generated document. Another thing we typically want to do is to populate nicely formatted tables with repeating data from the XML file. For instance, here we want to populate this table with data from the orders for this particular customer. The way that you create such a table is to insert a content control in the paragraph immediately before the table. The XML contains an XPath expression that selects multiple elements. In other words, the repeating data in the XML that will be inserted into the table. You then put your table in the template document immediately following this content control that contains this little bit of XML, format the table as you like, and then in each one of the columns, you put an XPath expression that selects the data to go into that column. 
this expath expression is relative to each of the elements selected for the table in this select attribute up here. As we can see, we're selecting orders slash order, and down here we're selecting dot slash product description. Looking at the XML, we can see from the root element, dot slash orders slash order is going to select two elements, order one and order two. And underneath that order, we can see the product description element. That is the data that is going to be inserted into the cells in that column. And looking at the generated document, we can see that the paragraph that contained the content control that selected the data for that table is gone. That paragraph contained only metadata, and we don't need to see that in the generated document. And we can see the data that was inserted into the table. There are as many rows in this table as were selected for this table by that XPath expression that selected the repeated data. In the template document, you can format this table in any way that you like, and that formatting will flow through to the generated document. Another thing that we might want to do is to generate some repeating content in the generated document. The way to do this is that you have a content control that delineates the start of the repeating content and another content control that delineates the end of the repeating content. All of the content in the middle, this is the content that will get repeated for every element that gets selected by this dot slash orders slash order XPath expression. And of course, in the repeating content, you can insert other content controls that pull in additional data. As with the table, the XPath expressions between the repeat and the end repeat are relative to the elements selected in the repeat content control. We can use any variety of XPath syntax, including selecting data from an attribute. Here we can see that repeating content. You can even nest repeating content if your scenario so requires it. In addition, we might have content that will be conditionally included based on some data in the XML file. Here we have the start of conditional content, the end of conditional content, and in the start of the conditional content, we specify the XPath expression, to select the value that we're going to test on, and we specify the match value. If the match value equals the data that is retrieved from this XPath expression, then the conditional content will be included. Looking at the XML, we can see that, in fact, the high value customer element has the value of true. And here we can see the conditional content that was included in the generated document. We can, of course, put tables in this conditional content. We can have repeating data and even nested conditional content. The XML that we see in all of these content controls is validated per small schemas in the document assembler module. Here in documentassembler.cs, we can see those schemas. This approach makes sure that we get good, valid XML in all of these content controls. The question arises, what happens if you have errors in your data or errors in the template document? This method, documentAssembler.assembleDocument, contains an out parameter, template error, which is a Boolean that indicates whether an error occurred. If this parameter is true after invoking document assembler, then you will need to look at your data and the template document to see what the problem is. Let's go into the template document and I'll change this to dot slash name Z, which is not in the XML. When I run the example, it tells me there are errors in the template and it tells me to see assembled doc dot doc X to determine the errors. Looking at the assembled document, I can see the actual error that occurred that this dot slash name Z XPath expression returned no results. We could have invalid XML in this content control. 
If I get rid of this terminating slash here, that makes the XML invalid. And looking at the generated document, I can see the actual XML exception that was thrown by the XML parser. An identical thing happens if I have XML in here that doesn't validate per the schema. You'll see the actual error thrown by the schema validator in the assembled document. There are a number of other cases where document assembler will report errors. For instance, if you have an XPath expression to select elements to populate the table and this XPath expression doesn't return any data, then it will report an error here. I will certainly be enhancing document assembler in the future. I can think of a number of different things to do to document assembler. We'll probably want to enable inserting images into the assembled document. We'll want to enable pulling in an entire document or portions of entire documents at a specific point. This would be a great way to enable inserting boilerplate material into an assembled document. You can find a video at this link that is a detailed tutorial on using Document Assembler. That video shows how to insert a content control and how to write the XML that goes inside of all of these content controls. Keep watching this space. I will certainly keep you informed as I make enhancements to Document Assembler. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.